Mbote Nabino, Lingali for Hallo. I'm David Alton, I'm a crossbench independent peer, member of the British House of Lords. I'm also a patron of Save the Congo. I'd like to share with you why Saving the Congo is perhaps the most pressing situation of this decade. Congo is lethal, it's dangerous, and it's urgent. The Congo has experienced many things. The first African war following the invasion of Congo by its eastern neighbors to the worst humanitarian crisis since World War II. The scale of killing is unparalleled in the Congo. It's also the rape capital of the world, with rape used to punish, destroy, or to displace communities from rich mining areas. A woman is raped every minute in Congo. An estimated 1,100 women are raped each and every single day. This tragedy has been going on since 1998, so you do the maps. But to me, however, Congo is the centerpiece to Africa's development. Anyone who's read about or visited the Congo would testify to this. It's a beautiful, green, alive country endowed with indescribable natural wealth. It's right at the heart of Africa, neighboring nine other countries and touching all cardinal points, north, south, east and west. What this means is that peace and stability in the Congo has a direct impact on the prospects for security, development and stability over a large portion of the African continent. Without a functioning state in the Congo, developments and prosperity in North Africa cannot be linked with or influence those of South Africa and vice versa. Now the United Kingdom has a much greater role to play than we are playing at the present time. For a century, Britain has led the fight for human rights and justice around the world. And over the last few years, under both Labour and Conservative governments, there have been large sums of money given in humanitarian aid to the Congo. But we've not done all that we might, too often confusing the symptoms with causes. Humanitarian aid is not justice. Congo needs justice and it needs it right now. There can never be peace without justice. Congo continues to pay a very high price in humanitarian needs and in human lives. Millions have been killed, millions have been displaced, countless have been raped, and millions more will continue to perish from the ensuing HIV AIDS pandemic triggered by orchestrated campaigns of sexual atrocities against women, still spreading at an alarming scale. I've been in the Congo. I've seen the scars of the rapes, the traces of the killings, the signs of the looting, and the frightened faces crowded together in refugee camps. And there and then, I made myself a promise not to rest until this issue is resolved. I've heard it asked, what can I do to help end the wars and the human tragedy in the Congo? And so often we can feel like the little boy in Robert Louis Stevenson's book who says, the world is so big and I'm so small, I do not like it at all, at all. But that would be to shrug our shoulders and to walk away. Well, from this side of the world, there are three things we can do. Each of us can do three practical things to help. The first is to raise awareness. Tell your friends and keep the Congo on the political agenda. Secondly, get your member of parliament, your rabbi, your pastor, your priest involved. We need to bring influence to bear in order to change policy. The world has been saying one thing and doing another. And we need to make impunity, insecurity, institutional failure and illicit trade in minerals the cornerstones of our policy and the strategy towards Congo and the whole of the Great Lakes region. And thirdly and finally, get involved. Join Save the Congo. Bring your skills and your expertise and be counted. Visit the website www.savethecongo.org.uk You'll get more information there, and I do hope that you will get involved. Thank you.